Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Can I start? So today is the day that, uh, uh, including me, uh, all the members from Japan is appearing. So we, what we call ourselves as a JD All Stars. <laughs> but we also have uh, well, another member, uh, some, several other members too. And uh, well, I'm going to talk about, in, in the afternoon, we're going to talk about uh, uh, exploitation of uh, uh, GBIF mediated by the physical data. But uh, before that, look, let's look back what we have learned uh, from uh, what well, since two days ago. So well, we have a four days course, and then this is the third day. So we are in the well, second half, okay? And uh, we're starting from the well, variation of source, and uh, we learned uh, to describe the Darwin core, uh, to describe the data according to the terms of Darwin core, which is very, very important. We took some time. And then we obtained the format of data, and then well, following the uh, lectures uh, given yesterday, Day, this, uh, this morning, well, we had a huge, uh, tremendous work, and uh, we experienced a uh, well, num number of number of experience and questions uh, for data publication. Some of the, some of you may feel that oh, yeah, I'm too tired to hear that. I'm too tired. I can't work anymore. Right? But well, don't worry. We are going to change the subject. So, <laughs> so well, we can you can stimulate yourself again. Now. Uh, from here to here, we started to work on how to mobilize and how to publish, uh, how, how to publicize or uh, how to publish the data. Okay, but now uh, we have the data accumulated already in GBIF. Okay, what we are going to do is to use the data. So change the topic 180 plus uh, 180 degrees from the opposite. Okay, so. I'm going to talk about the exploitation of GBIF mediated data. And the key point is uh, the following three. Uh, understanding how to search and download the data from GBIF. Of course, many of you have already experienced uh, to see what kind of data are stored in GBIF. So have you ever uh, visited uh, GBIF uh, homepage, a website, those who have uh, seen the uh, GBIF website, please have a look. Uh, please raise your hand. Okay. Yeah, of course. All, all, all nearly, nearly all of you. So if you didn't have any time, well, this may be a good chance. So have you ever tried to download any of the GBIF mediated data? If you have experience in that one, uh, please raise your hand. Okay. Very few. But uh, well, this may be a good chance to uh, to seek. Right? So. In the Google, you may be able to see or search for various data. But if you have something like an AND search or OR search or MINUS search, it will be much more helpful. Uh, something like that, like a filtration, is also available from GBIF. So you may be able to learn that one. And also, uh, please understand the potential exploitation of the data how how the GBIF. So please think about what kind of data, what kind of analysis you may be able to carry out. And then finally, learn examples of exploitation and visualization of GBIF data. And the visualization uh, specific topic is going to be uh, talked by uh, Jimo-san uh, this afternoon in the second part. OK, let's go back to GBIF uh, website. Well, Maybe you can uh, freely, well, you can now go back to GB, uh, you can access the GB uh, website, and it provides a tremendous numbers of uh, biodiversity data. And uh, well, you can freely uh, well, download the GB data. However, to download the GB data, you need to be registered. Okay, so well, I guess that the many, uh, all of you have already got the GB registration. If you're not, Please. Oh, okay. Well, then, uh, well, you should do that quickly. <laughs> so, because the uh, well, you need the password and the ID to uh, download. But uh, well, since that this lecture is not specifically uh, going deeply into these, so please do it yourself later, and that it doesn't much matter. All right. 
So GBIF is an, it, well, I repeat this information, but GBIF is an international organization that focuses on making biodiversity that are available through the internet. And this was established by, uh, established in 2001 uh, based on the, uh, based on the recommendation in uh, some group of OECD. So GBIF itself is uh, supposed to uh, expose the data and uh, let them, let us use the data and so that the, uh, well, the, their mission is to be the foremost global resource for biodiversity information and engender the smart solution for environmental and human well-being. For whenever you have the uh, biodiversity related issue, well, consult GBIF so that they can provide the data and please work on GBIF mediated data. Right. And uh, well, as suppose that you are one of the data provider or data holders, you house the data, you have the database, and you learn how to publish the data to GBIF. Okay, uh, these DH, each of these are the data holders, and they, each of these people starts to provide the data and open the data through the node. Um, we, in, in Japan, we have KDIF, in Taiwan, you have KDIF, and some of the nodes are available in, uh, in the world. And uh, all of these are published through IPT, uh, Integrated Publishin Publication Toolkit, and maintained as a, a cluster of data in GV. So uh, if you publish the database in one set, data set, and then it will be maintained in GV as it is, together with the metadata, like whatever you, uh, who holds the data, who published the data, and why, and, and the, uh, what, on what purpose, and the other, uh, and what kind of uh, organism are there. So this is an example of a data set uh, well, if you provide the data through the uh, data set, uh, if you provide the data set through the IPT, it will be uh, maintained like this. So you see that uh, this is the uh, example of Lepioptera uh, uh, specimens uh, of Iwate Prefecture. And it contains 22,000 uh, specimens, and which are uh, downloadable as a whole. And the summary states that uh, this is the Lepidopteran specimens of the museum, and uh, they are from Japan. Actually, uh, the data point is indicated in the map, showing that all the data, map, data points are located in here. This is actually Iwate Prefecture. So that's why uh, Iwate Prefecture collects all these specimens and provides it. Okay, data sets also have a DOI. So, we have talked about the DOI, and have you, well, do you, do you know about the DOI? If you don't know about the DOI, please here, raise your hand. Okay, DOI, but well, don't worry. DOI is a kind of, a, a DOI is a short of Data <coughs> Digital Objective Index. Identify. Identify, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that is to identify some kind of data or any kinds of well, uh, well, data or document or any kinds of things that is regarded as a certain object. So data is untouchable. We cannot take, we cannot uh, well, touch that data. But uh, we take the cluster of the data as a touchable object. And we provide the ID for that. So by stating DOI, we can specify or uniquely identify the data object. In this case, uh, this is the uh, data object, one set of the database, and uh, it given this ID. So whenever you call this ID, it <coughs> means this. So that's the that's how it works in data uh, DOI, right? And uh, well, all these uh, data indicates published by somebody. Registration date is this, and served by somewhere. And the uh, index extra data is here. Metadata document is available from here. All these are explanatory data to the data set itself. Okay. The source data is about the uh, butterflies from Iwate the picture. But these are attached to the uh, source data. So what do you call these data? 
metadata, right? Okay, these are metadata. Now, whatever we are going to do is this. So when we search Jupyter, we are going to make a search command. And then the, the certain data is extracted. For instance, the green data is being extracted from various data, right? And then we can download these data as a single table. So this looks like a single table, but actually, well, usually it's coming from various data. Unless we download whole the set, right? It's composed, it, it's a composition of a various data from a various data set. And by yeah, analyzing this data set, for instance, uh, we can locate where these, uh, where these specimens or observation or occurrence uh, come from. So this is whatever I, uh, this is something I showed yesterday, the day, two days before, and uh, this shows the, uh, where is the miscanthus sinensis, which is regarded to be the uh, invasive species from Europe or America distributes. It's coming from Asia, and now widely is distributed in North America, and somewhere in Europe, and also in this area. So we can use these data uh, for protection purpose. And uh, to do that, we may have to learn how to visualize this. And these are going to be the topic later, okay? Then how to download the data? Well, we said, I said that, that, that GBIF allows you to download any data available in GBIF. But the, to do that, you have to register as a user to obtain the password, right? So you, in other words, you need to be registered. So I guess that the many of you have already registered, so you can go ahead. And uh, well, access to GBIF website, this is the website, and search the data by keywords and download the data, right? Okay, so this is what we are going to do by itself later. But uh, before that, I would, uh, uh, I would explain and uh, I'm going to demonstrate uh, that. So this is the, uh, one of the demonstrative examples. Um, the mission now you have is to search the occurrence of Amanita, spe the Amanita species in Japan. <coughs> Amanita is the, some kind of mushroom shaped like this. Looks like uh, very delicious, isn't it? Right? Actually, this is very delicious. But uh, well, there are similar species <coughs> which is close a relative and uh, which is poisonous. So please be careful when you eat mushrooms anyway. Right. So in this case, well, we want to search for Amanita species in Japan. Right. In Dawiko terms, Imagine what kind of Darwin core terms do you need? In this case, scientific name is Amanita. Well, actually, the genus is Amanita. So, so any species that uh, contains Amanita. Right? And the country is Japan. So if you have the materials I provided two days ago, uh, you can search for the uh, well, various keywords available uh, as a, a word various uh, terms that is available for uh, searching uh, through the GBIF. Now, what you have to do is to go to the GBIF website and touch the occurrence and click on occurrence. And uh, well, you don't have to do that uh, now because you're going to see and I'm going to show you how it works. And then you, you have to attempt, right? Okay, several times of clicking brings you to this website. And here you see the configure and the filter, add the filter, right? And uh, I'll make a click on that, and then you get the new menu on here. So these are the uh, search, yeah, searchable um, keywords. And at the top, you see the scientific name. So you choose the scientific name and add here um, Amanita. Right. Uh, yeah, here. And uh, uh, well, type in Amanita here and uh, touch here. And then it will go in here in like Amanita. And then click add filter again. <coughs> and then, well, there will be a menu. So select a country again. Oh, sorry. 
Amanita and uh, add once and then go to set uh, go to set another filter and then well uh, uh, to Japan please type in Japan and apply already we have Amanita in here now you have Japan in here that means both filters are available that is the kind of and search okay and then well it will say Amanita is something uh, now recognized <coughs> as, uh, well, as this. So because Amanita is the generic name, and uh, usually in GBIP, they are accompanied with the uh, authority. So uh, uh, it, was, uh, it was described by Perzun. So it is uh, accompanied with P-E-R-S period, which is showing the authority. OK, but anyway. Um, by clicking, you see that the 1,356 results is available, right? So in total, when country Japan is used as a keyword and Amanita is used as a scientific word and earns and search is performed, then it will bring this number of results. Okay, to download, you text here, click it. And then you get to the download all these from your search. Okay, then click on download. And then you will see this one. Occurrence download uh, with a simple CSV or download for archive. You can choose uh, one of these. And in this case, we are going to choose the, uh, simple CSV. And then GB forms you. No being required. Right? Okay, then you have to log in first and enter your keyword, enter your user ID and password, and then GB will say that the downloaded data set is to be given this DOI. So DOI is given for each of the data set, but now you have a new data set created by the combination of the part of the DOI, uh, parts of the, the database. And GBIP is going to give the DOI for that database, uh, for that data set as well. Okay, sometimes later, you get the email from the GBIP <laughs> that your uh, download is now available, it's ready. So, because sometimes you need, well, in this case, small amount, but sometimes you have thousands and thousands of database to be, uh, to be downloaded. So it takes some time for searching and preparation of the package. Of course, nobody's working for that. Machines are always working for that. Anyway, so it's when it's ready, you get the answer from the GB. And by clicking here, you get this one, zip file. And within the zip file, you see CSV files. So this is the, uh, uh, this is the, this is something, whatever you record it. Okay, I got it. And click it, and then you feel, well, you get this one. So, what happened? Right? Remember, Excel is not applicable to UTFA. So, this is coming in UTFA. So, if you want to use Excel, then import to Excel, or please open with the uh, memo pad or editors, or well, in this case, memo double plus, but not pad double plus, yeah, is not provided. So, but we usually, any kinds of editors are available for UTFA. So open that first. Well, in that case, do not open directly with Excel. This is a trap. So first open with the, with the editor. Well, it seems it's confusing, but try to Try to well, uh, select all, control A, well, command plus A, and then copy, oh, sorry, copy to uh, that, open with the editor, and then copy and, exit, uh, copy and paste to Excel. Then you get this one. Well, oh, it's beautifully arranged that all the data is right here, okay? Or there is an alternative. If you really, really want to open Excel for the, for the beginning, um, then use the import function and choose import from the data tab 
and choose the target file in UTF-8, well, there is a, uh, there is a, a small tab that where you can, uh, you can indicate what kind of uh, data format these are. So indicate, uh, choose UTF-8 as a format, and click on import, and choose the format. And then uh, you can get the, uh, the data. So you can do this later, but it's easy to make a copy paste. Okay, right. Then I'll do the. Uh, the uh, I'll, I I will do whatever I have shown you. So please visit uh, GDF uh, website anyway, and uh, please get ready. And uh, well, it seems that uh, the occurrence that I uh, decreased a little bit. Uh, this is for some reason. I will explain that when we have dinner. Okay? All right, by touching that one a few times, okay? and then you can add, you, you are now uh, ready to add the filter. So try to add a filter and choose scientific name. All right? And type Anamita. <laughs> and then the whatever you type is moved to here. So I'll wait at here, so if you're not ready. filter for countries. Country is Japan. Then you have apply in both. <coughs> both bottom words. So Click on this, and then you see the results in here. So anybody got the uh, everybody got the the answer? If you have more than what two thousand or something, then maybe something different happened. So anybody who is who has the trouble. Please raise your hand. Okay.
Anybody sitting together, please help together, each other. As long as you have, or uh, well, you can play with a filter, you don't have to be registered. So uh, at, at, at this stage, please just uh, go to see that uh, you have a correct answer by adding the filter, okay? So if you get the, uh, this number, and you are successful. And stop at here, don't go further. So if you have any problem now, please. Don't choose. 
don't choose, just Amani and press return. Yeah, do not choose. Well, sometimes, I don't know why, but the GBIF, in this case, suggests unnecessary suggestions. So if you take the suggestions, well, you get yeah, misled into a wrong answer. So the proper answer is one, three, uh, five, six. But somebody got uh, more than that. <laughs> but that is wrong. And also, um, Jivif suggests something else other than Amanita. So just Amanita and the press return. Otherwise, you get some suggestions. If you choose one of these, well, Jivif is taking you to somewhere else. Okay? Don't get off at the wrong stop. Now, if you have already reached to the proper uh, proper result, then press this one, download, and choose CSV file, and try to download. GBIF will ask you that login is required. So at this stage, you have to log in or create a new account. That's already in here. So, okay. So, people who are not logged in already, then please do it now. Well, just go ahead, try to go ahead, and then people, um, the GBP is going to ask you whatever is required. Okay? Okay, anybody succeeded in uh, going into GBIF? Logging? Then they will get, they will provide you the GBIF uh, new DOI as a record, uh, as a deficit. So, anybody who doesn't uh, go well, please. Anybody got the proper answer? <laughs> okay? Okay, that way? Okay, well, suppose that we already have 1,056 records of Amanita species in Japan. Well, it may contain some species identified to a specific level or even more lower level. 
or some of them may remain in a generic level. And some of them may be georeferenced. That, may, that means uh, we know that where it occurs exactly. Or some of them are not georeferenced. So how many of them are georeferenced? Uh, we can do that kind of research, that we can do that such kind of uh, uh, analysis by using Excel or whatever you like. Uh, in this case, well, we see that uh, well, more than half of them are georeferenced, and uh, well, most of them are identified at least two species. So that means this may be a good genus to uh, monitor the genetic diversity. Uh, I mean. Uh, the species diversity within the species, uh, within the genus, and maybe, well, we may be able to use this as a, a good genus to see the distribution. So later, we may be able to use this kind of data to show, to map on the data. Right? So in this way, we can uh, use the data. So this is a small, a very a quick analysis about uh, among the species, but uh, if you have the data at hand, you can do that with by yourself using Excel. So if you, well, if you are interested in how to do it, but maybe I can do, it, I can show you how to do it. But uh, well, right now I'd like to concentrate on some other examples um, of using the filters. Okay, I've got two uh, exercises. One is to find well, and uh, well, you don't have to. Uh, Download all the data to see, but because download sometimes takes uh, hours, and uh, well, if you are all these classrooms is starting to download everything, well, GBIF secretariat in Denmark will be surprised. Why in the U.S. They, they, they know. We, we they know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then we don't have to worry. Yes. About. <laughs> but anyway. Well, you, well, if you really, really want to what is happening, then you can download. But you don't have to do that, to just to know the number, okay? So just make uh, some practice on how to make the uh, uh, query or how to make the, uh, the filtration. So the, the exercise is to find out how many data are housed in GBIF for these data, okay? Georeferenced occurrence of mid-cancer senescence in Japan or China, recorded since 1980, including 1980. Right. And uh, any type specimens of Blackman, which is again my favorite, right? So think about what kind of filter can you think, right? And uh, what kind of Dali core terms do you have to use? The keyword is already in here, and uh, think about that. Uh, well, what kind of uh, keyword can you choose? Right. So I'll give you some uh, some time. So please try to work on this and uh, get the uh, answer. Okay. So this is hands-on time. Uh, if you well, if you're if you're not uh, well interested in this kind of thing, then you can also work on yourself. Having a one based on your own interest, that is also acceptable. But anyway, uh, we can work on for uh, say uh, until maybe two o'clock or so. raise your hand so that we can help you and uh, also I ask you to help each other um, next to each other, okay?
So each of them have a number, a certain number. So I, I, well, here's the hint. I intended to give you two separate questions, um, so that uh, the first one is uh, intended to think about how to combine the AND filter and what kind of keywords can you think. And the other, well, this is much more easier, but uh, how can you think of any type? That's the keyword. I hope you understand what type is. <laughs> So how many of you got uh, zero for the uh, first one? Ah, even for Japan? Really? Yes, yes. Actually, well, uh, quite recently, you, you know the, uh, the, the data uh, number is pretty reduced, right? Uh, there are some uh, data sets gone. I mean, well, uh, deliberately reduced I and mean, uh, withdrawn in GBA. So if these data are included in that data set, the answer will be zero or less. Yeah, but uh, well, I will try to show you the, um, what, what I did about, uh, about a week ago. So about, <laughs> about a week ago, it helped. But, that's great. but if you do that right thing, 
but then, well, it will be if the data is not available now, then that's the one. Okay, now how about the uh, any type of specimens? The second one. <laughs> Maybe, well, zero may be wrong. I, I think the, well, they've got the, at least from Japan, it shows 60 and uh, 670 here. So, maybe. Over 1,000. Over 1,000. Uh, from China and Japan? Japan. But is it wrong? <laughs> So you see that, uh, well, some of you says that over 1,000, some of says zero, but that zero is obviously wrong because the, because of the query, and then maybe, well, 670 is the proper answer I got. So it's not reduced.
So if you are well, if you don't know how to search trials and errors, so please go to the filters and uh, try any keywords. So then it will give you what kind of keyword you can use in what way. Okay, I'll give you several more minutes to work, play with. <laughs>
I think there are several same names under different authorities. And the GBIF only allows uh, his cancer sinensis under some. So if you choose uh, his cancer sinensis group A, and then it doesn't work. So you have to be sure about the name authority sometimes. But uh, well, I'm not sure why they suggest something different from what we expect. But I'm not sure why he said. But uh, try to, if you if you think that the, the answer is wrong, then maybe you should try um, with the authority or different authority, or so that the authorities, uh, so that the whatever you didn't want is not included. Okay? In this case, uh, input here as miscancelsinensis as a scientific name, and choose the country from both Japan and China, right? And uh, well, you can repeatedly uh, do the uh, filtering of both Japan and China. In this case, it's impossible to uh, for the single occurrence to occur in two different countries. So automatically, it is regarded as a kind of a or uh, search, okay? And then I said. Since 1980, so that's the uh, time range. And uh, if you go to the uh, year, an occurrence year, and then you can see this dialog dialog page, uh, dialog box, and stating that uh, you can say that you can choose from is after or between or something. So in this case, is after, and uh, you choose a type of year, a 1980, and then you can apply. And how about the geological locations? So we see the choice location. And when we go, uh, when we choose locations, and then it goes to this one. It shows this one. So you can choose this one uh, from, the, from the map about the, uh, uh, to which area you are going to search. Or uh, just georeferenced or not georeferenced. So in this case, I said geo-referenced. So in this case, you can choose this one, right? And then apply. So if all things are normal and uh, going well, um, it will suggest 3,000, uh, 3, 360, uh, sorry, 370, 370 records. So has anybody got the 370? No? 
71. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's increased in several years, several days. I prepared it about uh, one or two weeks ago, so maybe somebody increased. So I, I think that is the, if the, uh, the query itself is not uh, wrong with it, and then the uh, answer is or something like that, I think the, uh, that's because of the GV database is always dynamic. So some database may be deleted, some uh, classification, some may, may be updated, and based on these differences, you may be able to get different answer every time you get the, uh, you give the uh, same question. Okay, so that may be an interesting uh, thing. It's very dynamic. Now, um, thinking about the lacunum species, well, everything you have to do is to say lacunum as a scientific name and choose well this one unspecified type. Okay. And uh, from the uh, from the from the keyword type status. So whether how can we think about type status is the right choice to think. Well, this is based on your experience. Um, currently, I'm not sure where we can find such kind of guidebook. What kind of uh, keywords can be thought in what kind of uh, questions? So you have to get uh, some kind of a trials and errors. But don't worry, if you are working on, well, this kind of database, anytime, well, that kind of thing happens. So you may wonder, we want to just, we just want to know the answer, the proper answer directly. But, well, searching 10 or 20 out of 100 is easy, right? But uh, searching out of 6 million is not easy. So this is the way how we have to use the database. The database originally uh, should be used to, to delimit the search area so that you can find the problems or whatever you want more easily. So if you choose wider area that you want to search in, well, in location-wise or in year-wise or time-wise or whatever, and then you may be able to choose whatever you want, um, you want to know more easily than starting from the very beginning, okay? Please think it that way. So in that case, uh, type status uh, of lacunum and uh, type status and unstated, and then it will give you 91 records. However, so Roland here uh, tried to check all the type status and they uh, and he got uh, different answer. So what is the difference between these answers? How can we solve the problem? Maybe we can download and uh, download each of the records and start to compare what's the what's the cause of this problem. And that is the kind of uh, first step for the uh, uh, analysis. And also there was a, uh, one of the colleagues uh, had the trouble in downloading. But I'm not sure, well, because he got the, uh, all the data available for download. So, well, there may be a kind of a mechanical failure or something, I don't know. Maybe you can um, later uh, log in again and then try it. Uh, yeah. Some, uh, sometimes the same problem is in IUCM. Yeah. I see, okay. I hope that it's not a serious or well, otherwise it will become an international issue. Right? <laughs> okay, so the answer is something like this. I uh, use occurrence or location, country, or scientific name, and choose <coughs> these as a keywords, right? And if you, well, above combination will give you 370 results uh, about uh, several, well, about 10 days ago, or 20 days ago. And for that one, uh, you get uh, 91 results about one, uh, 20 years, 20 days ago. But now the data may be changed. And that, well, you know that the dynamic data will be changed every time you ask, even if you are asking the same questions. Okay, there still have some more time to play with, but uh, I'd like to add some more words about further uh, advanced uh, technique. 
And uh, well, if you are already tired, in well, if you feel already tired by setting a filter, well, then you can skip this session. But uh, if you are still uh, willing and you are still um, available to well absorb more new things, um, please uh, just have a, a listen. And uh, I don't have I don't impose you to remember all things that here. Rather. Please remember what you can do using what we call API. And uh, well, proper attitude is to remember this word and whatever you can do and consult with IT people. And let them, well, let's please ask them to develop something. Okay? So API. API is the application program interface. And this is, this is the program that helps users to retrieve the required data more easily and flexible manner from GB, in GB files. And API uses, well, in broad sense, API uses functions already equipped with the given systems, in this case, GB. So if the GB is equipped with the uh, a search function, and then you can use this thing, well, to obtain whatever you want more easily, theoretically. Well, more easily means, well, you have to type in the command. So if you feel that uh, you, it, it will, you are using the computer system by what, if, what is known CUI, character user interface. It's, of course, easy to use graphical user interface. But why we are using this kind of thing? Because you can obtain the, uh, the proper uh, data set in certain format, like JSON, and which is applicable to other uh, applications. Well, it's possible to download the data and at your hand and examine that in Excel. Yeah, that is OK. But if you want that to happen in some other way to be analyzed, then API, use API is better. So how to learn API? Well, you can go to this w website uh, to see these things. But already you may be tired to look at these things. Well, what are these things? You don't have to worry. Um, well, here's the, uh, uh, the exp explanation from this website. Here's the, uh, I enlarged this explanation. This API provides services for searching occurrence data records that have been indexed by JVM. In order to retrieve all results for a given search filter, you need to issue individual requests for each page, which is limited to a maximum of 300 records per page. Note that technical reason, who or, uh, we also have a hard limit for any query for, for this amount of records, uh, you will get an error if the offset limit exceeds this number. To retrieve all records beyond this number, you should use our uh, asynchronous download service instead. So do you understand what this is? Yeah, if you do not understand, don't worry. But uh, well, you can ask your friend in IT. I don't understand this either. So, but remember that uh, you can use API uh, by typing it. Well, uh, whatever, typing in the, uh, the keyword and the combination of the keyword and search word. So use these things. And uh, whatever you're going to send, the send like a command is called query. Query means a question so, or command. You're going to ask GVIF, give me this records, these records. Well, you did that command exactly the same thing by using graphical way. But the uh, API, well, you need to go with the more character interface way. So you need to see, you need to know what Q means. Q means any strings in the, uh, in the records. Basis records, capital of numbers, numbers. These are the keywords already given yeah, as a term of Darwin core. So again, you need to think back that the Darwin core is all the basis. If you need, if you think, if, if you know Darwin Core, 
if you study Darwin more, more deeply, and then you'll be able to control the, uh, the database in G more easily. Okay? So, just click at here. Then what happens is this. And that here, it says something like this. So do you understand this? It means that uh, while well, you are going to GBIF API version one about the occurrence and search this one. Search this one means taxon taxon key is one. But actually taxon key is the new word for you. And actually this means that the each of the taxon record, uh, each of the taxon ID uh, given in GBIF. So if you don't know the taxon ID, you cannot do anything, right? So that's why you don't have to worry. Well, you, you can consult with IT people. Um, they will be able to see what a taxon key is. Right? But instead, you may be able to change this part to something like country. Right? If you set this part to country equal JP. So JP is the standardized way of saying the country number, a uh, uh, country code, country code, right? So instead of stating Japan, J-A-P-A-N, well, just leave with J-P, that states, the, that limits the country. Okay, let's do this at the GBIF website. So please type in this at the GBIF website. And uh, well, just say uh, country equals J-P and see what happens. Yeah, please do. Yeah, please do this. So type this one, HTTP something, 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 occurrence, search, across countries, GP. And then, immediately, GBIF will answer this one. It's full of letters. So has anyone succeeded? If you have succeeded, please raise your hand. Okay. So please read Somewhere at the uh, first line, there is a, a number saying count. So count means how many records were recognized. And this number should be equal when, we, when you use the filter uh, graphically. Right? And uh, well, you can do the same search as we did using the uh, API. So in this case, country equals JP and the scientific name is Amanita. So this means that the scientific name includes Amanita and the country is JP. So that's what we searched before. And then it will give you the proper number up here. Right? So this is the way how we, how we can uh, use the API. And if you type in here to search Amanita, and then it will be yellow, highlighted. And then you can see that the old records include uh, Amanita. By the way, what is the, all these uh, text? What, what kind of format is it? Actually, they are uh, given in, uh, well, certain formats. Um, sorry. Yeah, okay. And you can do the same search as we did, which as we just did, using that kind of uh, character coding, using the query. So what kind of a query do you, can you imagine? You don't have to work on it, but have a look at this. As I said, that, well, you have keywords about the location and the uh, scientific name and year, right? And there is a specific way to express those things. Here. Again, you are using GBIF API version 1 about the occurrence and search these things. Country is equals with JP and country is CN, which means China. And uh, you are going to uh, combine all these commands with N. Okay? And here is 
2016 this year. So this means the uh, the range. So this is the way to express how to show the range between this year and this year. So you have to know the particular format when you are going to use uh, well, uh, API. Fair. And also, has coordinate is true. This means coordinated, the co the geolocated, have uh, geological uh, references. And also, a scientific name is Viscantus percent percent 20 sentences. I don't know why, but uh, if you input space, it will automatically transform in this way. So science, all these are in equal. So what you did try to do with the graphical interface can be done in this way. And this is how GBIF is providing the data back to, uh, back to the user. So if you are going to use JP only, Japan, then that will give you 359 records. And if you delete the China, uh, the Japan, then in, in that case, China, 11 records. So, well, just compare these things. And then you can get, well, you can see the difference between these. And uh, for the second question, scientific name is Latinum and type status is type. Type means any any kinds of type. But you you may you but you may say that oh, I don't know how to state any type in type. <laughs> so you have to learn how to do it. But you are not a specialist. So you don't have to worry, right? But you have to know that this may be possible if you are well um, if you know much more about the chip and the control. So actually, actually, one of my one of our colleagues, uh, Kumiko Totsu in JDIF, uh, started to work on that kind of API. And using the API, she develops other uh, applications, which may be applicable to your data as well. So in here. Um, I'd like to explain as a kind of application purpose. You don't have to follow this all. Uh, you have, I don't. Uh, I didn't mention that you should do exactly this way. But uh, just here as a good example, how you can use the API or how you can apply. Okay. So API is a program that helps user to retrieve the GB required uh, the required data more easily from GB and a flexible manner. So it is a kind of uh, uh, intermediate uh, function uh, that allows you to get the GBIF data and hand the given data to somewhere else, some other uh, computer programs. And well, I gave you the uh, the format. Of, well, you you saw the uh, the screen with the full of uh, letters, and that is actually it's called a JSON uh, format. JSON format is short for JavaScript object uh, notation. Well, you can read this uh, explanation. But you can just think like uh, uh, JSON is uh, another type of data format like CSV, MP4, or DOC. So DOC is usually used for documentation file for MS Word. And MP4 is for music and uh, movies and uh, those things. And CSV is comma separated version, so comma separated forms. And uh, like that, we have JSON format, right? So, if we work on that, we can get the uh, we can get the uh, uh, well by uh, by visiting API, we can get more information. And then JSON format is something like that. But if you like, if you uh, organize this, reorganize this, and then you can see these things. So it is the combination of the Darwin core terms uh, together with the actual value started from how it is described and ends up in something, right? And uh, once you say in character coding, the uh, state some kind of magic, right? Um, 
like Harley Potter uses something, right? And you, instead of that, you're using API, right? And then GB provides this in, in a certain format called JSON. And by using JSON, it can be applicable to other things. And one of these uh, developed was uh, the visualization. So I show you this one. I don't want to go into detail about this page, but uh, well. uh, so uh, GBIF has the uh, the data, and uh, well, data is what uh, you're going to do. The uh, you can you can get the uh, uh, you can get retrieve some amount of data uh, by API, and it can be applied to some other uh, application like Excel and some other databases. So by using some other technologies about, uh, well, for instance, uh, for the database, MySQL, uh, mapping for these technologies. I don't go into detail about this. Well, she developed this kind of thing. By just checking one of these, it shows how, well, how many data are obtained from what countries. So if you, if you well, by showing that, and you can uh, indulge whatever you want, and you can also list the occurrence of each and to know um, to know where it occurs. I'm sorry this is too dark, but well, you can see the point here. So it shows. And also the nature of, of the specimens, uh, of the, uh, also the, uh, the data of each specimens. And uh, in case of, well, for instance, Japan, it shows the distribution in this way. So if you go into, well, if you touch here, and then it, the screen expands, and uh, to tell you more detail about the occurrence. So some other things are also available, and uh, links are also available for various things by, uh, from the list. And then finally, it shows exactly where it is. And all these things are uh, developed by, her, by a single person, by her herself. And well, if, if so, if the IT person is familiar with some other technologies, well, they can combine the GB data together with whatever you know, whatever is already available. So, in that case, you don't have to be the developers, right? It, but if you if you want to be a wide a wise user, you have to know whatever is whatever is possible by magic word API. And you can consult with the uh, developer in a proper way. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, the, the the system she developed. It's called Bio One. And uh, uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can ask her directly. And uh, well, some of the data is available, so you still have some time to play with. And you can um, and please, um, if you have some time or chance, please do. Okay. And uh, well, that is about the retrieval, uh, how to retrieve the data uh, from GBIF and hence hand it to some other database or some other applications. And that starts the application or exploitation <laughs> of the, uh, the data. Okay, um, that ends my story. Right. Thank you very much.